Hi guys. Um, I am reaching out to the YouTube community because I just don't know what to do. I need you guys' help, okay? Um, tips, tricks, advice, especially if you are in the medical care industry or um, have similar medical conditions or um, I know some of my AS friends um, are subscribed to me, so please, you guys, um, comment below or um, share my video um, in other communities because I, I, I just have no idea what to do anymore, guys. Uh, this is going to be kind of like a story time video. Um, I am just traumatized. Like, I am beyond the point of giving a fuck what anybody says about me or making fun of me or whatever. Like, you guys have no idea what I've been through. And right now, I just need advice. And I don't even give a shit about you hater fucking um, Bliss and, and Kara and the, the replacements over there. Um, I went last Sunday, I went to bed and I woke up and level 10 pain, like the most pain I've ever felt in my life. Um, I have had like these mystery stomach issues for years and years and um, no, nobody's listened basically, you know, I had my primary care, um, for years and she would, she would kind of band-aid my problems, which was fine. And then, you know, everybody knows my situation, you know, when I was married and then I, I lost my health care. So I fought three years to get on disability with no income and no health care. Um, so I got my health care back. So the last year I've been trying to get to the bottom of some of these, these problems that I have, you know, my, my primary diagnosed me. I was HLA B27 positive. Not my primary, but um, I got referred to a rheumatologist who diagnosed me with enclosing spondylitis. You know, I've had these mystery problems for years and years. I remember, you know, back when I was um, waitressing and stuff. And um, I couldn't walk on my foot for like a month. You know, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong. And I didn't have health care back then. This is, you know, when I was in my, like, early 20s and stuff. Probably late teens, early 20s. I just couldn't walk on my foot. It hurt my heel. And then it went away. So I was like, okay, YOLO. <laughs> and the knee pain. And, and then I got iritis for the first time when I was, I think it was, like, 21, 22. Um, and nearly went blind in my right eye. Um, had iritis several more times after that. Now I, I, I don't even drive anymore. Um, so let me get back to Sunday. So Sunday night, um, going into Monday morning, or no, it was probably like 3 or 4 a.m. It was like right when I was waking up, and I'm in level 10 pain. I'm, I'm talking screaming in my floor in agony pain. Like it was underneath my rib cage. It felt like somebody was squeezing my insides out. And it was, like, radiating through my left breast, if that makes sense. Like, um, you, I've never wanted to be small-chested or flat-chested in my entire life until this day. So I go to the, I, um, go to the emergency room, um, call an ambulance. I get to the emergency room, and they treated me wonderfully. They got me out of pain quickly. Um, they did a... Um, CAT scan, a, a CT, they didn't find a blockage or um, a bowel perforation or, or anything like that. They couldn't, they, they determined that I wasn't dying, but they couldn't determine what was actually causing this, this level 10 pain. Okay. And um, I was doing the best I could with trying not to scream. Um, I knew this was like a religious hospital too. And, you know, my mom is Catholic and, you know, I kind of got in trouble. Anyways, I'll get into that. The second visit to the ER. Okay, so I go home. At this point, it's Sunday night. It's about seven, eight o'clock and my pharmacy was closed. They prescribed me like some something called Bentil, which will make your stomach stop spasming. And they prescribed me um, Miralax and what else? Did, something for nausea. I think it was like not Finnegan, but 
you know that other crap they always give people that don't work worth a damn i forget what it's called but it's like they give it to you after surgery sometimes but anyways so you know i was happy to have it but like i said like we have um one 24 hour pharmacy in my town and i'm pretty sure that it was um Actually, I didn't even remember that. I know that it's a Walgreens and it doesn't take my Humana Medicaid. So I really wouldn't care if it was 24 hours or not. It doesn't take um, my health insurance and I can't afford to pay for all these prescriptions. Point blank. So um, I go home and um, Redneck drops me off. I give him my prescriptions because my pharmacy is next to his house. So he's like, well, in the morning what I'll do is I'll go and I'll fill these and I'll come over and you'll have your prescriptions. Well, I woke up in level 10 pain at about 4 a.m., um, called 911 again, get to the hospital, level 10 pain, screaming in agony, and the nurses are bitching me out, telling me basically to shut the fuck up. They're not gonna see me any faster. They wheeled me into the waiting room, and I understood there was nobody in the waiting room. There was like one other person, okay? And that was it. And I'm like, at, at this point, I'm, I'm getting a little bit irate. I'm like, I'm not here to seek drugs. Uh, trust me, this is not fun for me. And I'm literally like in the floor. I cannot control the screaming. It was a level 10 pain. And I've had, let me explain something. I had natural childbirth with no epidural, no pain medication. I've, I did that two times, three times. The pain was worse than that. It was a pain you couldn't escape. There was no way I could lay. There was no way I could breathe. I could not escape this pain and I had no idea how long it was going to last. So at this point, I'm like, either get me out of pain or I'm going to kill myself. Like literally, it is that fucking bad, y'all. So I get put in a room finally and this uh, doctor comes in and he's trying to talk to me. And I'm trying to, like, I was like, sir, I, I don't know what is wrong with me. I know that I was diagnosed with enclosing spawn. I didn't even get the words out of my mouth when he was dismissing me. That don't cause that. That wouldn't do that. And, and at this point, I, I'm just bawling my eyes out. I'm still screaming in pain. Um, I don't know why I'm in pain. I just want to be out of it at this point. Okay, guys? So at this point, um, oh, I forgot to mention that before this, I had been questioned several times about why I didn't just go get these prescriptions filled. And I tried to explain to them, and I don't know if it just sounded like a what had happened was story. And, and something about this, when I told them about this whole prescription thing and, and waiting to get them filled in the morning because it was a Sunday night, you know, um, it, it just seemed like ever since I told that story, they just assumed that I was in there drug seeking or some shit. I don't know. Even though selling my vagina on the street would have been easier than screaming in agony for three days. But I digress. Um, so let's see. So the young uh, trainee doctor, I believe he was probably young and in training. Anyways, you guys... I know I just showed that car, but whatever. Um, so I, I'm starting to get upset and realize that, that you know, this guy's not going to help me get out of pain. Like, he's, he's not going to help figure this out. You know, um, they couldn't get an IV in my arm for the longest time, and they finally got an IV in my arm. Well, the IV popped out and I had blood spurting everywhere. So now at this point, I'm covered in blood too. I'm sure I was a sight for sore eyes, guys. I guarantee you I was a sight for sore eyes. I hadn't slept. I was tired. I hadn't eaten anything. And I'd literally been screaming in pain. And instead of putting um, medication in my IV, he wanted to give me a Norco tablet which I was all willing to take, like, 
you know, whatever. But I had a feeling that I wasn't going to be able to hold it down. And let, let me go back to my symptoms here, guys. I know this is all over the place. I'm just really upset. So I haven't, I wasn't going to do a video. So I didn't have my mind prepared to be like, you know, step by step stages of everything and how it happened. I'm just, at this point, I'm just desperate. So... <laughs> I hadn't been able to hold anything down and I couldn't throw up anything like I was throwing up like my whole body was heaving up nothing I couldn't get anything to come up and the time that this had happened to me before um, when I had went to the emergency room this is when I first kind of started YouTube and I had the first attack and I was kind of gone for a little bit um, they had hospitalized me and they pumped my stomach and they treated me really well and I felt so much better after they had pumped my stomach um, you know I, I don't know if it makes sense I'm just telling you guys the symptoms that I know of um, that have happened to me um, I don't know if it makes sense or not Okay, so back to the Norco tablet. So I spit it up and I'm trying to explain to him that I couldn't hold it down and I showed him, you know, you see that yellowness, that's that's where I just spit up this Norco tablet. And he looks at me and he goes, well, go take a Maalox then. And at this point, I start screaming for my nurse in a grievance because he's already been treating me like shit since I got there. I knew I was being treated like shit. And I was just like, I, I'm the nicest person in the world to everybody, especially a professional, especially a healthcare professional. The the morning before when I went in there, I was like making friends with some of them. I actually know some, a lot of healthcare people that work at a different hospital, but I digress. Um, so, you know, I get it. I get COVID. I get this is a broken system. I get that, that, you know, they're working on a very limited staff. I get all that. I get it. I do. I wouldn't trade shoes with these people for anything. I understand their job is hard. I understand they see loss of life. I understand they've probably lost loved ones. I am a very empathetic, compassionate person. Trust me. And but but to be treated like knowing I'm being treated a certain type of way just had me just like super emotional. OK, so um, when I start yelling for the nurse in a grievance, I called the like I, I was like, let me just talk to the doctor real quick. And, and I wanted him to just own what he did, man. Just be like, look, honey, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm stressed myself, but he lied and said that I didn't tell you that. I told you I was going to go get you a Maalox. And I'm like, no, you didn't, sir. You're changing your story right now. You're changing your story. You did not say that. You told me, well, go take a Maalox then. And, and then I was getting discharged. Okay. And guess who conveniently, they couldn't find a grievance form. And guess who, because when I was screaming for my nurse, she's like, well, I can let you talk to the charge nurse. Well, guess who conveniently wasn't there um, when I was when I was being discharged the charge nurse of course so I'm like at this point I don't have my phone with me I don't have um, nothing with me I'm covered in, in blood and throw up <laughs> well not throw up but just you know just yuck I was disgusting and had to wait for my sister to come pick me up because the only number I had memorized was my mother's. <laughs> so I'm like having to um, sit outside and wait. I, I mean, it, it was just, it, it was a total shit show train wreck dumpster fire at this point. And, oh, and when I was in the waiting room, they were yelling at me about wearing my mask. But every few seconds, I was heaving like I was going to throw up. So like I would have to pull the mask I have really long curly hair and you know I I think uh, two of the masks broke honestly I, th I wasn't doing it purposely but I think they were just janky you know you ever been to the grocery store and just get like a janky Walmart bag and and you know the quality is a little weird but you have to use it anyway and so <laughs> so two masks broke so she's yelling at me to wear wear a mask but as I'm leaving it was now about six seven o'clock in the morning and every single one of them that were that were cussing me out and bitching at me now have their masks pulled down and are on their phones probably playing um bejeweled who knows I don't care um so it gets it gets worse so okay so um I'm out of pain now you know um 
they gave me a Tordal shot, which I'm fine with. I don't care. If aspirin will make this go away, give me aspirin. I don't give a shit. You know, I, it's like I told this man, I don't give a F about a Norco tablet, a Tordal, a, a Lortab, um, a, none of that. What, whatever gets me out of pain is what I want. You know, um, so go home. <laughs> and I'm I, at this point, I haven't had food on my stomach and since Sunday. And I think now we're going into Wednesday. And um, I'm thinking that I'm going to be okay because obviously I haven't eaten. So what I'm thinking, whatever's triggered my stomach, you know, like if I'm not eating or or anything maybe maybe I'll be okay and then you know I can see my doctor and go from there because um, they wanted me to make appointments and stuff well oh okay let me also explain something else about my symptoms okay so the first doctor that I had when he told me I didn't have a blockage or anything he said listen um, your white blood cell count is high and this is something that I've noticed for years that my white blood cell count seems to always be high and my primary care doctor blows me off about it. But every time I've been to the emergency room, they seem to be concerned about it. You know, enough to tell me that it's concerning. Because um, last year when I was in the ER over this, um, they were actually going to admit me and recheck my blood um, to see if it had went down. Um, but I begged them not to admit me because I, I was just, I wanted to go home. And I knew my primary care had a lab. And I was like, I promise I'll go to my primary care. Well, my primary care doctor tested me. And before the test results came back, because of COVID, she left the practice. Okay, my rheumatologist, the other person that I'm trying to get to help me, um, like, get to the bottom of all these pro problems, left the practice. So I have no rheumatologist now. And I just got a new primary, guys. So take that into consideration as well. Like I said, our system right now is broken and messed up. Okay. So, next. Let's see. All right. So, all the male ambulance drivers that I had, which was the, the two times, were wonderful to me. Okay. They treated me really nice. And I'm not like a woman hater like um, Bliss over there is. Her replacement. Um, see you next Tuesday, motherfucking ass. Um girl, you just need to shut the entire fuck up, bitch. I wish you would keep talking shit up there being your stupid ass. You are a replacement, darling. You are over there. You, you know what? Let me tell you this, girl. I never said one bad word about you. And I sure didn't tell people about how I gave you money two times because I'm not like that. But you want to keep that shit up. And I've, I've ignored your ass for going on a year now. But you're going to sit up there on Jake's panel. Guess who wanted me to get up on his panel and be a replacement just like you are, honey, and talk shit on you and do parodies of you? He sure did. But guess who said nah and noped out of that because I ain't a fucking pick me girl like you are. But I digress. So just shut the fuck up, lady. <coughs> Anyways. So. Round three. Severe fucking pain in my floor, screaming again in agony. And here comes two Karens in an ambulance to pick me up. And I'm like withering in pain, like level 10 pain again underneath my ribs. And I cannot be still like I, I am doubled over. And, and Karen starts questioning me about, have I taken any illegal substances because I seem a little fidgety? I'm like, lady, I don't know why you're asking me that number one. Um, but I'm in level 10 pain here, lady. And I feel like my stomach is exploding and she's like, well, that's protocol. So I, I, I'm, I'm like, well, you know, funny that I've been to the ambulance. I've had ambulances take me all week up here to the hospital. Not one ambulance driver ever asked me that Karen. And so you two, um, white ladies come rolling up on me. Um, yeah, but I digress on that one too. Not that, you know, I'm trying to be judgmental against white ladies I'm white too but you get the picture you know the type you know what I mean like no empathy no compassion whatsoever and I understand that they probably see drug addicts every single day I get it I live in a town where 
Um, we live in a country where they just gave stimulus checks to everybody, including the crackheads, including the people that suffer from addiction, and it has caused a lot of problems with people ODing in my town. We've had a huge spike in overdoses, and I get it. We have COVID, and now we have stimulus checks causing people that normally don't have a lot of money, a lot of money to go get their fentanyl-laced shit and die, and and it's awful. I actually carry, um, what is, I carry Norco, not Norco, um, Narcan. Um, I had a friend overdose one time. Um, I've seen things before. So I wanted to be a person that can carry Narcan in case I ever seen somebody OD. I have compassionate, and, and it's like, you know, even if I was a drug addict going to the hospital, where's their compassion? Like, at this point, even drug addicts can have pain like this, like, but I digress. I, th this whole system is just fucked up. So, um, I had mentioned to the Karens that I had went to this specific hospital and they did not help me. And then they told me that I was going to have to go back to the same hospital. So I'm freaking out even more now because I have two other hospitals and um, my doctor is with this other hospital that I wanted to go to. Um, but they were like, no, you have to do continued care. So they take me back to the same place that is not helping me. And then I go through this again. So by Wednesday, I'm just purely exhausted. I had not eaten anything. Um, I am just like been through it, guys. I mean, I am traumatized by that pain. I wouldn't wet. I wouldn't wish this pain on Casey Anthony or Satan himself. That's how bad it was. And I called my gastroenterologist, who I had only seen one time prior to this, and begged him to see me yet uh, Friday. Begged. I, I was like, look. And, and they still tried to, you know, they're backed up too. Like, even for an emergency appointment, he's like, well, I can see you. Well, they were trying to get me to come Monday, but when they explained to the doctor my problems, he said, bring her in, go ahead and take her in, you know, take her, whatever. Y'all hear that train? Pretty cool. Anyways, so my gastroenterologist sent me to x-ray and we talked about a bunch of stuff and I guess he's going to do some tests and then I have a game plan if I become... I don't have any pain medication, but, you know, if I become in level 10, level 10 pain again, you know, I'm not going to go to that same hospital. I'm going to go to a completely different hospital, but I'm just so upset with how I was treated. You know, I mean, it's just like, what do I do? How do I win here? You know, like they, I, I'm like, I wasn't dying. Okay. There was nothing that was going to make me die. <laughs> But what happens when you're in a level 10 pain and they can't find out why? I mean, I don't know what this is. Um, every suggestion that I came up with, because, you know, I had family members, well, you know, say this or, or ask about this. And it was, I felt like I was totally dismissed before I even got the words in my mouth. He's shaking his, it wasn't the first doctor. It was the second doctor. Okay, it was the second guy. I think he was in training. It was a Sunday, middle of the night. I'm sure they put the shit of the shit on the shift. And it is what it is. But I, guys, I am just like at a loss here. You know, I, I just need some advice. If you're in the medical care industry or if you've had similar issues, is this autoimmune? What is this? Because they can't find like a blockage or anything, but it's definitely in my ribs. Like I carried twin babies full term, really high in my ribs. I mean, my boys were like um, six and seven pounds. For twins, that is amazing. Um, to not go into premature labor, that's amazing as well. So I don't know if that did any damage. It feels almost like nerve pain, if that makes sense. But it literally feels like somebody has a vice and they are squeezing me from the inside out. 
and there's nothing I can do to escape the pain. I mean, it was that bad. Um, so if, if anybody can offer any support, I, I don't care if the fucking, um, dick riding hoes, um, have something to say about it guess what bitch I ain't gonna listen to it so you ain't gonna hurt me even though Blish you were a part of the people that doxed my kids and made a video um doxing my children but you don't want people to know about that see this is what this cunt does okay this see you next Tuesday she she hits real hard okay she's that type of pick me girl that's gonna hit you hard and throw gen grenades at you so hard so that way when you speak up she's done ruined your character because she's done said all this shit about you because she don't want people looking in her backyard well bliss your backyard needs clean you dumb bitch so why don't you worry about cleaning your yard up before you go worry about what else is in other people's backyards because your situation's real weird too honey so you need to just shut the entire fuck up and move on do you understand me move the fuck on bliss it's been over a year and I never drug you I never talked shit on you when people wanted me to I shut up because you were a friend to me and Lele was a damn good friend to you you dumbass <laughs> but that's okay you little dick riding replacement hoes over there y'all keep cozy enough to Jake to be the next person on his panel when all y'all really look like is silly ass hoes okay you're dick riders don't worry I don't want your internet dick I don't want the edict. You can have them all. No need to be jealous anymore and talk shit. Now jot that down.